fortunately for fellow Londoners, um, yeah, for fellow, yeah, for fellow Londoners, most of you are probably aware that we've now moved into tier three. Um, over the last what couple of weeks or so, I guess cases have been surging with people, um, naturally deciding or to go outside and mingle and hang around with each other. Shops have been packed. Central London's been heaving with human beings, uh, trapezing all over the place. So it was no surprise, really. Um, I guess the only funny thing about it is that if you actually look at the list of restrictions, there's not much difference between a tier two and tier three, except for, I think the non-sitting inside of a restaurant or a pub so you can still go to one but you have to get a takeaway that's the only difference really and then i guess in that respect what the government is sort of doing without actually saying it out loud is that they're trying to prevent people from just hanging around in groups that don't pertain to the people that they actually live with and i just wish in my opinion i wish they were just more honest about that because the hospitality industry is on their knees right they they you know so many casualties um during covid especially with the open op, you know with the lockdown and reopens and the lockdown and reopens and the tears it's just creating so much misery and pain for a lot of people out there especially with the lack of support from the government and it's understandable right i don't think the government should be put in a position where they have to sort of support each and every um restaurant bar and chain you know a huge sector of hospitality industry in the UK to sort of look after completely but from what I've read online most places or the industry at large are more than happy to kind of earn their own keep they don't want the handouts they want the ability to try to make some sort of income during these difficult times and if they're given the you know the space the remit to sort of be COVID secure and open to a limited capacity they'd be more than happy to do so right but they don't want to do that but instead they want to keep locking down you know huge sectors of the economy and then refusing to explain exactly why they're doing it in a scientific fashion right it doesn't really seem like if you risk again depending on the stuff that you read the stuff that i've read so far says that the transmission rates in bars and restaurants isn't as high as you'd expect i think it said overall it contributes to maybe three percent of case five percent sorry of cases between that five to ten percent of cases which is insignificant considering the amount of cases that happen in schools right and they have remained open for the entirety i think of covid right um and i don't really know why that is why don't they just come out and say honestly that hey the reason why we're just doing this is so we don't want you guys hanging around outside there's no scientific evidence behind or the scientific evidence that does exist is dubious and there's no conclusive you know conclusion from it but we're just doing this so we limit people from just standing up hanging around in pubs and frolicking or whatever it may be um instead of just doing this whole like fake um you know assertion that they're somehow trying to protect us all by closing the bars and pubs when actually the bars and pubs are probably the safest places to be because they go out of their way to make sure they're covid secure but hey what can we do this is um news from bbc london bbc news story said london move into tier three as infections rise it says um london will move into england's highest tier of covid restrictions from midnight on wednesday parts of essex and parts of herefordshire will also enter into the same time a new variant of the coronavirus has been identified which may be associated with the fastest spread in southeast england miss hancock told commons which is interesting i'm not sure how true that is i think that's just a ruse to get us all to stay indoors but hey supposedly we have a new variant of covid that happens to only exist in the south and somehow magically will go and pause for the five days across christmas sure okay anyway parts of restaurants and tier three must close except for takeaway and delivery also under the rules sports fans cannot attend events and stadiums and indoor entertainment venues such as bowling alley cinemas um uh, must remain shut now the interesting part about that right is that this weekend actually i think this weekend i think i might have seen it here let me see if i can get up on my thing this weekend right because I guess, as you're aware, in tier three, you can go to, sorry, in tier two, you can go to indoor events with up to, I think, a thousand people, wherever the half of your capacity is. And I guess this or this weekend just gone, a lot of venues are sort of like using that as an excuse to put on some nights, right? Some DJs are playing in some places, some semi plaguey raves are happening out and about, but you know, it is what it is. But the funny thing about it is that they've never really ever allowed or given any indication that nightclubs will be allowed to open, right? Nightclubs specifically with any kind of limited capacity during COVID, right? It's just never been entertained. The assumption is, oh, you can't be in a nightclub. That's the worst place to be. Um, transmission rates are high. Lack of, you know, air conditioning. Um, some of the places don't have good ventilation. Bloody blah, 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 right? That's, that's what they've been telling us. 
did you know that this weekend, right? This weekend just coming, there was going to be um, the World Darts Championship was going to take place at Ali Pali, Alexandra Palace in London. In indoors, they were going to have a World Darts Championship take place, an event with actual, you know, high ranking darts players playing to an audience full of lager outs. If you've ever seen any footage of people going to the darts, it's a very rowdy affair. It's not quiet. You can't put a quote unquote muzzle on the people that go to these sort of events. You can't police them to make sure they've all got their mask on because they're all going to have a massive, massive pine in their hands. So imagine the hypocrisy of that, that somehow the hospitality industry is at risk of spreading Corona when before this restrictions and lockdown, the Alexander Palace was going to be open. And it's going to be servicing darts fans from around the country. Because don't think it's only going to be London fans coming down. Darts is a very working man sport, right? It's a thing that you probably mostly get your first introduction to it playing in a pub or some sort. There were going to be loads of people from all over the country coming down to London to go see the darts. Especially on a one-off night, especially since they've all been indoors for the last year and a half or for the last year for the most part. Like imagine that, make that make sense. How does it make sense that darts is going to happen this weekend? But then they wouldn't allow you to open a nightclub with restricted with a restricted capacity. It doesn't make any sense, man. It's utterly, utterly maddening how they basically done this. Um, it continues here. Uh, la, 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 la. Health Secretary told MPs that action had to be taken immediately before the next scheduled review of England's tier three system on Wednesday to slow the sharp exponential rises in infections. Adding that in some areas the virus was doubling around every seven days. Of course. No surprise when you keep people indoors for a prolonged period of time, innit? Hospitals across England, um, Essex and Kent were already, sorry, London, Essex and Kent were already under pressure, he warned. He said that there was a currently nothing to suggest that the new variant was more likely to cause serious diseases and advice was that it was highly unlikely that the mutation would fail to respond to a vaccine. But he urged vigilance and said everyone need, <laughs> needs to take personal responsibility. Sorry. I love the whole vigilance thing. I love the whole like be alert thing, right? There's no real stern mandate to do certain things. It's all a suggestion. It's all like a quasi coercion of some sort. Especially, you'd think you'd think that wouldn't be the best place, best way to kind of get people to do what you want to do. Especially considering the amount of time we spent indoors, right? People have got you know lockdown fatigue, and then you're gently suggesting that they do what you say to do. It's like no, I'm not, not going to listen to you. Um, anyway. With Kent midway, midway and Slough already under tier three rules, it means larger parts of the southeast of England will soon join much of the Midlands, northeast, uh, northwest, and northeast of England under strict closures. More than three, 34 million people will be in tier three when the changes come into effect, and 21.5 million in tier two, and about 700,000 in tier one. The latest tier areas include Great London, of course, all those areas. Are the, what are the tier three rules? The rules are no mixing indoors. You can meet groups of six outdoors, shops, gyms, and personal care. Like hairdressers are staying open. Pubs and bars, of course, close, but they're open for delivery, which is always, this is, from the beginning, this was always funny to me, right? Because I remember at the start when they told us, you know, bars and pubs are the main cause of the spread. And I thought to myself, okay, if they're the main cause of the spread, why are people allowed to go in and order or go in and stand up or go in and sit down? It didn't make any sense, even with limit capacity. Then they took it away and said takeaway only. But people are still going in and standing around, especially at places around where I live where they sort of have like a um, a door on that end, on this end, that both lead outside. Some places were using that as an opportunity to kind of have it seat standing only sort of thing. So that was obviously having people indoors, I guess, you know, with the breeze coming in and all that sort of stuff, it helped. But that never really made sense for me. Either you keep them open with limited capacity and COVID secure, um, uh, you know, procedures put in place, or you close them completely. This kind of in-between thing is just strange. Um, of course, sports fans can't attend stadiums, indoor attend event venues such as bowling and the cinemas must stay closed, and people are advised to not travel to and from tier three areas. So again, you know, the fun's been knocked out of of, uh, of living for another brief period, um, but then suddenly it will all reopen again just before Christmas because for some reason, COVID takes a break over the five days ago across Christmas. Again, makes no sense, but hey, we we there's very very little that we can do to influence all these sort of things um we just have to kind of you know uh grin and bear it for the most part grin and bloody bear it 
talking about COVID um, responses, we have an interesting um, sort of prediction here from Bill Gates. Um, he was talking to, I don't know what's his name, is it Jake Tapper? I don't know, one of these nondescript white men on CNN and discussing basically when he thinks um, the world would get back to some level of normality. And he kind of echoes a lot of the things that I've spoken about in here, obviously, where I would think, I would imagine, you know, regular schedule programming, as in wherever you were doing this time, you know, December of 2019 would probably only start to happen, you know, again, next year, December 2021, or more likely than not middle of 2022. And he kind of echoes a lot of these thoughts here via this interview on CNN, which I'm going to play for you now. Do, 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 do. Million people in California are right now under brand new stay at home orders uh, as hospitals there uh, risk being overwhelmed. Um, there are a lot of governors uh, who oppose bringing back these lockdown orders and forcing businesses cl to close. What do you think? Do you think more states need to consider taking that kind of drastic action and the kind of drastic action we saw when the pandemic first began? Or can there be a more nuanced approach? Well, certainly mask wearing uh, has essentially no downside. They're not expensive. Bars and restaurants in most of the country will be closed as we go into this wave. And I think, sadly, that's appropriate. Depending on how severe it is, the decision about schools is much more complicated because they're, you know, the benefits are pretty high. The amount of transmission is not the same as in restaurants and bars. So, uh, you know, trade-offs will have to be made. But this, the next four to six months uh, really call on us uh, to, to do our best because we can see that this will end and you don't want, you know, somebody you love to be the last to die of coronavirus. When do you think life will fully return to what we thought of as normal back in January? No masks, no social distancing, uh, no other protective measures necessary. Certainly by the summer, we'll be way closer to normal than we are now. But even through early 2022, unless we help other countries get rid of this disease and we get high vaccination rates in our country, the risk of reintroduction will be there. And of course, the global economy will be uh, slowed down, which hurts America economically in a pretty dramatic way. So we'll have starting in the summer, about nine months where a few things like big public gatherings uh, will still be restricted. But the funny thing about these sort of predictions from people who obviously have the means to survive however long the world economy comes to a grinding halt is the ease at which they just say we should all just put our lives on pause until 2022, isn't it? That's the funny, interesting part of it. Number one, anyway, you know, asking Bill Gates what he thinks about, a vi you know, uh, a virus of this uh, magnitude makes no sense he has just about as much insight and learnings and knowledge as we do right obviously he is a very learned and intelligent man obviously a very successful person but to somehow um revert to what you know bill gates said because he gave a very predictive uh TED talk a few years back uh, predicting maybe that we won't have the infrastructure in place to deal with a global pandemic and it's obviously been proven right it is quite interesting that regard right that we sort of always sort of um, defer our authority or our guidance to people who generally have means greater than ours just because they have the means right somehow because he's able to amass wealth and to create these great companies that somehow that makes him have an opinion that is more valid than the ours, which it isn't of course just have an opinion like you and i but like i said it's just concerning that these people always have such disregard to or are so quick to say hey let's just close everything down um until things go back to normal it's like we can't do that though you know we can't right we have different countries such as australia and new zealand who have somehow been able to handle and limit the spread of covid whilst somehow you know, living the everyday life without the vaccine. And that's what we're gonna to need to do if we're going to ensure that the most at risk people, the people who are basically, you know, at the lower rungs of society are going to have some level, some sort of future to even look forward to, right? Because I think people who obviously occupy the higher echelons of wealth are gonna be always gonna be okay, right? You know, you know, you see, you know, you read reports of, you know, Jeff Bezos now, 
the founder of Amazon is now the richest man, you know, in the history of the world. Obviously, most of that wealth has been, you know, has sort of quadrupled or his net, you know, his, uh, his net worth has sort of, you know, got exponentially high since COVID. Um, so there's obviously some sectors, some people who have also benefited greatly from it. Supermarkets, I'm sure, for the most part, I'm sure Sainsbury's stock and Tesco stock has gone crazy high during this time. But for everybody else, we were just fighting for scraps, right? We were just sort of like waiting and hanging on as hard, as much as we can, as long as we can, right? We're essentially in those sort of movies, right? Those cheesy 90s movies where the hero is sort of dangling on the side of a building on his fingertips, just hoping for a couple of more seconds, hoping a, a stranger's hand peers over the side and pulls him up, right? But if you're a rich person, you're in, you're in a helicopter. Somebody's pulling up in a helicopter beside you and telling you, handing a rope on two so you can climb yourself in. You're perfectly fine. You probably don't even end up in a position where you have to fall off a building in the first place um so that's actually the issue at hand so as accurate as it is i just don't want to hear it coming from bill gates i really don't i think if anything um politicians local governors should be going without out of their way to make sure that they somehow reopen parts of the economy as safe as they can just so um there is some sort of ability for people to resume a normal way of living in some respects and more 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 important than not to be able to provide them for themselves because a lot of these places with the exception of maybe germany i think that's been really supportive of different sectors of the economy and providing funds and support and all this good stuff most countries are really resistant to offering up any you know any potential of supporting their citizens in a monetary value because they know they can't do it for a prolonged period of time because there's no guarantee or, you know, that COVID is going to be over in the next year. They can't do that. Um, and once you give people money, they're going to expect it forever. It's just what it is. I think it's human nature, right? When you get, I don't know what, maybe it's entitlement. I don't know, but I get the resistance to doing it. Fire. If you're resisting and you don't want to introduce or reintroduce socialism to your country and you want people to earn their own living, then allow them to go to work allow them to open their businesses up, allow them to travel, allow them to do everything that they need to do in a safe way so that they're not in a position where they need to ask you for something. But again, you know, we're just all subservient to the people in power and we're just sort of all waiting around, hoping things get better soon. But I don't want people listening to Bill Gates or I don't want governments listening to Bill Gates. You know what I mean? I'd rather they just you know make their own decision based on the information that they have to hand. You'd hope so. You would hope 